Hello, welcome to episode 2 of the Epic Film Challenge 2.5 100 movies you really must see before you die Yeah, it's one of these again where we watched a film We recorded a review for it, I edited it And then realised it's not even in the book Safety Last from 1923, I believe Harold Lloyd, classic I, I, I just can't fathom why it's not in the book Now, in the case of The Great Dictator That made me mad that that wasn't in the book Safety Last I don't mind so much, but it still makes me scratch my head when other films I've seen, which are so much worse, are in there. So what you're about to see is our original review, where we thought we were talking about it because it was in the book. Well, I think it's safe to say that, at least, I think it is a film you should see before you die. Um, and, and you said it was in the video, so would you still kind of agree? If I said so, then that's... <laughs> I honestly can't remember what it was about at all. What, what oh. was in it again? Harold Lloyd. Yeah, Harold Lloyd. What's it about again? It's a, it's about a guy who um, moves to the city to get a job. Right. And... Yeah, I remember it now. Okay. We watched so many movies on top of each other. <laughs> they all are the same movie. Okay. All Seriously. Right. Yeah. But. Uh... But the whole time you were like safety last, and I'm like. <laughs> I didn't tell Connie what we were doing before I And I did hear what you were saying, but I was thinking so hard. <laughs> I was like, remember, come on, I couldn't... Uh. <laughs> I it's like that. when you meet that I person in the street that you went to school with and you're like, what's her name? You know, that's that's what it was like. It was like, yeah. And you're like, oh yeah, that's... And I'm being no honest again, like, yeah. so there you go. Yeah, I didn't... But I do remember it now. It was... Yeah, I liked it. Oh. Yes, I didn't tell Connie before we filmed this what we were doing it for, but yes. Safety Last, not in the book. Kind of ridiculous, but nevertheless, we did a review on it, so you're going to see it, and it's part of this series now. Did I really so, say it was a movie you should see before you die? I th now you're making me question it, shit. Well, if it's not memorable for me that much. I remember the movie now, Him but... climbing up the building, hanging off the clock, the yeah, thing? Yeah, that's it though, isn't it? Maybe you said no then. I think maybe I said no. I should have done my research beforehand. Well, either way, I think it's a film you should see before you die, so that's why it's in this series. And Connie doesn't really need to be here, so if you want to just leave now then that'll probably be more appropriate. Did I, say yes? I don't know, but you're disappointing me with your lack of confidence, so if you just want to sideline on over there, um No? Okay. Well, I guess it'd be weird because you're about to be sat in that same position again in the review. Alright, whatever. Here we go. On with our kind of review. Yeah. That wasn't... This is an abortion. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Not, not, not a real abortion. Not a real abortion. I mean, come no, on. No, you shouldn't have used that, that word. It, it's, it's fine. It, it's, um... <laughs> <laughs> Just don't send any letters in whatever you do. <laughs> right, on with the review. Ooh, me. On with the review of Safety Last. Here we go. Ooh. Hello, welcome to episode 187 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, a thousand and one movies you must see before you die. We're capping off the three big figures of the silent era, Don Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, and now Harold Lloyd, the so-called third genius. 1923's Safety Last, definitely his most famous film, his most iconic film, the image of him hanging off a clock off the edge of a building is one of the great images of movie history. It's just one of those great images. I'd seen it before a few years ago. Connie'd never seen it before, though she has seen a Harold Lloyd film before. What did you think? It was enjoyable. I didn't know what it was going to be about at all. Okay. I only saw the picture of him on the, on the clock. It was funny. I, I, I enjoyed it more than I thought it would. Uh, the story was alright. Yeah, that's... I mean it's it's a loose story, you know, like anything could happen in that kind of a story line, I guess. Yeah, with these comedy films, they look they kind of well, I don't know exactly how they did it, but I know with Buster Keaton, a lot of it would be get, coming up with gags first, mm. and then building the story around the gags. You know, what jokes do we want to do? What 
visual ideas do we want to put into to make people laugh and then how do we work that into a storyline. So the storyline of this is very simple as you say, has Harold Lloyd playing a guy who moves out of the country to the city uh, to, to make it good and to earn money and to get a good job so that he can bring his, his girlfriend over and they can start their life together. It's all based on that idea of success. And she won't marry him unless he gets a good job. Yeah. And he doesn't get a good job. He gets a job, but he, he's basically just skirting by. So he spends all of his money, not really on rent or food, but on buying his girlfriend expensive gifts and sending them to her so that she thinks that he's successful. And she ends up moving out there earlier than planned, and so he has to kind of keep up the charade that he is successful. So there's a lot of jokes where she visits him at the department store he works at in the city, and uh, you know she mistakenly thinks he's the general manager, so he has to go along with that, and so it just keeps building up and building up. That was probably my favorite part. Really? Yeah, because um, okay. I don't know when, when they were in the office. I, I like the creativity of it all. Yeah, there's some good some good gags when they she she's like, let me see your office, you know. And mm. So he waits till the general manager's gone. They go inside, and there's all sorts of yeah, great little just. And it was jokes. it wasn't too long, right? Like, it was very like there was a lot of variation in it, mm -hmm. and it was stressful in a way, but not like the last bit. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the, the the set piece of the film is the third act where um, Harold Lloyd's friend that he lives with uh, they get into a little spat with a police officer halfway through the film, and his friend gets away from the police officer by climbing this building, scaling it to the top, and Harold Lloyd is pretty impressed by it. Later on. He realizes he can make some money for the department store he works at if he puts on this big pu pub publicity stunt. <laughs> I'll leave that one in. And he says to his friend, look, I'll give you $500 if you can climb the building that I work at. And he'll make $500 too and it will solve all his problems and he'll have a lot of money. Because $500 back then would be a pretty high uh, chunk of cash. So that's what they set up and he's going to earn some money by, by bringing in publicity for the store and having someone climb the building. But his friend is wanted by this policeman who, t who, ends up, who turns up being there on the day. So Harold Lloyd has to climb the building himself and he keeps trying to switch places with his friend up the building but his friend is still being pursued by the cop. So they keep going up and up and up the building. That is the big set piece of the film, like I said, is Harold Lloyd climbing up the side of this building. So what did you think of that sequence? Uh, the building climb? Yes. Uh, it was... Uh, I I wish I could see like behind the scenes Cause you and were, see how far above the ground he really was. Because you were kind of hinting that you thought that it was a bit too drawn out, or no, no. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a big thing of the movie, and I guess you have to see the whole climb. But I guess it was necessary in a way. But uh, I felt like that was what the whole movie ended up being about in a way. Yes. And I ended up enjoying the general manager thing a little bit more. Mm because of how, I don't know, efficient it was in yeah, a way, even though, even though that was long too, it, it wasn't, it was just long enough. Yes. You uh. know? And I want to say also I thought that it was kind of thin how uh, the general manager said that they needed more people, more customers, yeah. when just five minutes before that it was so busy <laughs> that they couldn't even like get well, to the customers. Well that was on a sale day, obviously they put some sale on to kind of drag people in, but uh... Yeah, I, I suppose you could say that. I but didn't see the sale. Yeah, well, <laughs> in the very beginning, there's a scene where like there's women there and they're ripping yeah, the whole store yeah. apart. There's a little sale sign and they quickly elbow it over because they're too oh, busy trying to like that. pull through all the stuff. To me, it seemed like they were busy every Saturday or something. No. I, I saw the Saturday sign, but I didn't see that it said sale. Yeah. Uh, Some of the text was actually quite quick in this one. Yeah. Compared to other silent movies. The like, I just had enough time to read it once and I was reading fast. There was a note that Harold Lloyd's girlfriend gets from him saying, you know, yeah, things are going yeah. well and we had to pause it to read because the, it was so cursive and like uh, loopy the handwriting yeah. we had to stop and really try and figure out which is kind of fun actually but I found it frustrating I kind of I kind of I found it kind of fun but the ending of the film with the building climb I, again I, I felt this the first time I watched it and a little bit now drags on yeah. just a uh, just a little bit it's more. maybe two minutes too long yeah yeah and it, it it's about a 20 minute sequence like it, it's it's quite lengthy and it really i mean the whole movie's built around it and so it should be long and it's not yeah. like any of it is bad like it's it's all well done and it's all well built up to but maybe just a tiny bit too long even though it's a very short film hour and 10 minutes long very impressive uh harold lloyd i think for a while it was kind of stated that he did all of his own stunts on this but the long shots 
uh, is a, a stuntman, a double. But I mean, still, when you see him climbing the side of the building when it's in the close-up, it's it's still impressive. He's still hanging by one hand. He you know? is very strong. Like his fingers are really strong. And what makes it really impressive is that a, a couple of years before this, he um, was. huh was strong. Oh, was strong. He's not alive anymore, is he? <laughs> no, uh, definitely not. What makes it even more impressive is a few years before this, he got into an accident on a film with an explosive, which turned out to be a real explosive. So he lost his thumb and part of his forefinger, I think. Grip strength is key to the to this stuff, and and, one, yeah, and part of his fingers. and part of his fingers weren't uh, you know real, <laughs> but I found that impressive. I think what I found it impressive either way. Either way, exactly. But what they did do was uh, they they built uh, a fake building, you know, like part of it, on top of another building, so it wasn't a complete sheer drop, but it was still a, a fairly kind of you know I'm sure they had padding at the bottom and things like that. But what really sells the building sequence is those close-ups when he's climbing the building. You can see that it's him. He's doing it, and in the background you get the the street. You know, it, it's the cars a, moving and stuff, so you can tell it's not a picture. Yes, it gives it a real sense of perspective and scale, and uh, it's where movie trickery really works well. And then, like the shots looking down, and the people kind of oh recoiling at the bottom, like oh he's gonna fall. And yeah, it's well done. Incredibly well done and well put together. It's a it's a great film. I've forgotten how good the beginning was, the first act, because really all I think about when I watched it a few years ago was the building climb. But there's some good stuff at the beginning. Uh, the the opening shot of Harold Lloyd behind bars. Looks like he's about to be sent off to get hung because there's a noose behind him, and it really looks like you know police have pulled him. But it's actually the uh, the train conductor, and the reverse shot shows you that they're at a train station. Really funny gag. Like the way I described it isn't very funny, <laughs> but watching it uh, was very good, and mm, you, you laughed. The reveal. The reveal, yeah, and the, the noose and the trains and whatever. So there's a lot of good visual gags and things like that. Well, the text in the beginning made it seem like it was going to happen too. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to say, like, the whole movie is kind of built up on stress. Yeah. In a way. Like, the audience is supposed to get stressed out. It's that kind of comedy, you yeah. know? Where you're like, oh, get out! Or get up! Or get it off! Or come on! Or hurry! You know? It's always something like that. Like, him getting late to work. It starts off with that, and then it's just... Yeah. You get stressed out, and it's uh, it's uh, well done. Yeah, I thoroughly. It's probably one of the better silent movies I've seen, I guess. Yeah, yeah for what it is, it, it it does its job very well. Mm. I think it might be his best film, and why don't I actually? I think Speedy, I prefer, and I think The Kid Brother. I think The Kid Brother. I'm gonna say it, The Kid Brother is the best Harold Lloyd film I've seen. Is that the one I've seen. Yeah, the the country one with the climbing up the tree that. It's just such a wonderful film, uh, but this one is his most popular and most iconic, and rightfully so, and I think it's a great film. Is it a film you should see before you die? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I recommend it. Definitely. It's a great entry point to silent comedy, I think. And, and I'm so relieved. What? Well, when you were like, oh, we're watching this tonight, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like it. it. It's too good for you to not enjoy on yeah, some level. Yeah. And even even just regular people, I think, who who don't yeah. watch silent films, I think that they would enjoy this. Mm. It's uh, it's not just for us abnormal people. <laughs> abnormal. It's nicely paced and uh, yeah, it's and the regular. and the building sequence is just you know it's been referenced from Jackie Chan to Back to the Future. You know, it's uh, it's a, a pretty cool visual of someone dangling off a clock. Across. And and they kind of keep that because like he climbs a building, like he he'll slip and he'll fall, hang by one hand. But it's not until he gets to the clock that he's literally both feet dangling. And there's like stuff with birds kind of chirping on his head and stuff. And, you know, just all sorts of distractions. The net falls on him. Uh, the, the stakes keep getting raised higher and higher. And I love the gag of his friend saying, like, you know, uh, meet me one more floor up. I still got to ditch the cop. And at the very end of the film, his friend is like way off in the distance running across the rooftops. He's like, I'll be right there. <laughs> I'll see you later when I ditch this cop. And the text is really small, which is a, mm. a nice way of conveying a sense of uh, volume almost without, you know, actually hearing anything. I thought that was really cool. A little touch, so yeah. Okay, I'm just going to add this in here because I forgot to mention it when we filmed the video. And I think it's really cool. There was no planning of this. So I just decided we watched Safety Last tonight. And today is the 100th anniversary of Harold Lloyd appearing in a film as his guy with the glasses persona. Uh, he appeared in films from 1913 onwards and he had a persona called Lonesome Luke and made just dozens of films uh, as that character. But it was in 1917 on the 9th of, not the 9th, the, yeah, is it the 9th of September? Yes. Yeah. 
On the 9th of September 1917, I've forgotten what the film's title is, I'll put it down here somewhere, uh, was when he first appeared a hundred years ago today as the character that he would become known for for the rest of his career. And, uh, you know, Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin are more well known than Harold Lloyd. They often call him the forgotten, you know, third genius because um, when television rolled around, he didn't let his films get shown on television because he thought, well, you, you show it away for free and then you kill it. But that's when people started forgetting about him in those decades and so on. But so now... He killed it himself. In a way, kind of. But, I mean, you know, these days we have the, the luxury of DVD and now Blu-ray, which we watched on the Criterion, which just looked great. And so it's great that we get to see those films in great quality and stuff. Anyway, just adding that in, on with the review. It is a film you should see before you die. Hmm. And next we'll talk about... Is it in the book? It is in the book. We're doing this for the Epic Film Challenge. So. Oh, true. <laughs> so next time we're going to look at a comedy duo. Laurel and Hardy, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see you with that one.